All right, so instead of just going straight to the horse and trying to saddle him, I'm going to get you to saddle the fence because you've never really used a, a Western saddle before. And so this will just be a couple of easy tips for you and a way to practice it and then you can take it to the horse. Unfortunately, these are low fences. It's better even if you have a high fence because you go to something higher than what you have to saddle. You get good at that and then putting it on a horse is nothing. Okay, so you're going to pick this up and like before, put it on the side of your hip so that you're ready to launch it onto the horse. I feel like I want to start with it like this. Yep. Then I have to figure out which. Okay, I'm going to get you to saddle from that side. So a lot of people saddle from the left side of the horse, but that means they have to throw all the cinches and everything over with the saddle. If you saddle from the right side of the horse, it actually cuts down a number of steps and it makes it easier because you don't have to actually throw all the cinches over at the same time. You ready? All right. Yep. Okay. All right. So now see where you've got your hand like this. That's perfect. And like that. All right. That should be just right. If not, sometimes if your arm's a bit short to just go a little bit further there just before you start uh, will help. Good. Okay. But if you've got long arms or a bigger person, then that's the ideal spot. Okay. okay. Now come over to the fence. And here's what you're going to do. You can stand with your back to the fence and you're going to wind this up until you feel like it's got some momentum. And then you're going to throw it kind of like a discus and turn and put it on the fence. Okay? And at first, don't worry. Oops, this just came under. At first, don't worry, you know, if it's clunky and awful. Because after you do it a few times, you'll get good at it. Okay. You don't want to lift, you just want to swing. So it's like, whoo, fly your little latigos. See that? These are latigos, fly them. Yeah. And now just fly it onto the fence. Perfect. Perfect. And it hardly made any noise when you got it onto the fence. So when you get enough momentum here, and at first you might do it two or three times to find it, but when you get experience, you'll just go fly and launch. And then it's just the angle at which you fly it, according to the horse's size, that counts. Can I watch you do it once? Yeah. So I see your you technique. Did it beautifully. Okay. So see how they're not really flying yet? Like that? I'm going to fly them out. See how they did that? If I fly them, then I just position it. And it's done. And then when you go to a bigger horse, you fly them and just take it up there. You just change your focus and your angle of your saddle. And try it once more and see if you can get the latigos flying quicker. Now, my instinct is when it gets on the horse, I want it to, I try and flop the whole saddle on. Is it better to think to have the front of the saddle or the back of the saddle a little higher and this then you is rest gonna be, that down? Yeah, this is going to be kind of your pivot point when you get to the horse. Okay. And this will be higher. You'll actually be letting it go as it finishes. Your hand will kind of slide around here. But you don't want to think about it too much because like yeah. all in that moment it's done. So think about flying your latigos and the angle that you want your saddle to go. Fly them. Yeah, that's it. Okay? Much yeah, that looked good. Now, even though it's a small fence, I want you to pretend that it's higher. Okay, I'm going to put my hand up there and you're going to aim for that. Your horse will value the fact that you practice this. Okay, come next to me. Alright, so I'm going to put my hand here and that's where you're going to aim for. Fly them and when you've got them flying, you just angle your saddle upwards with this hand. You're right, don't think about anything else, just go. Yeah, I just only got weak. <sighs> don't lift, fly it. Yes! You're right. Yeah. <laughs> the stirrup hit me, but I'm okay. So, you know, where it got, like you got it up there perfectly, and then you tried to hold it there, and it was like, Ugh! Right. So you don't want to lift it, it's just this technique makes it so easy. Yeah, so this hand is going to get your angle of your saddle going up to where your horse is. Okay? Okay. Ready to give it a try? Let me do one more. Do <laughs> you want my hand up? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Now this time, like, think about getting your whole body involved, so it's not just your arms. Everything is swinging and throwing those latigos, mm -hmm. right? So I'm, once you get up there, I'm going to take my arm away, so you can just let it drop onto the fence. Whole body. Yeah. <laughs> that was a lot of swings. See how that came, came right around. <laughs> I won't hurt the horse, but I'll hit myself in the yeah. head with the stirrup. <laughs> so don't worry if it doesn't go perfectly the first time on the horse. But, okay. Um, I think you're ready. All right. All right. We'll turn him around so that you can saddle from the off side. Now, normally we don't tie our horses to saddle, but because I'm trying to teach you all of this for the video, we've just got the horse loosely tied like the rope wrapped around the the fence okay okay you're going to stand up with your back to his shoulder and show him the saddle on this side remember how to hold it that's it go right up to his shoulder up to his shoulder Okay. Now just pretend you've done this a million times. Don't lift, but angle it up. <laughs> Fly those latigos. Just think about flying them. Yeah. Zing it. Yep. Now go. Zoof. Hey. Oh. That was really good. That was surprising. <laughs> The technique really works. See, a lot of people take their saddles and they throw them up on the horse like this. And it, it scares horses. Whereas this way, when you do it like this, it's almost like giving them a hug. I know. My biggest worry was at the end of the swing that I was going to go clunk, clunk. And it just... Yeah, it just floats on there. And it's mainly because this kind of makes contact first. And the saddle just goes up like that and then settles onto the horse's back. That was, that was really good. Thank you. Okay. Now... You're going to have to let your cinches down, okay? So, unbuckle this. All right, let him drop down. Okay, now, before you even, like this is a brand new saddle, okay? So before you even put your cinches up on the other side, you can look at the middle of your cinch here and go towards the middle of your horse's belly. And if you miss that by about two inches, it's the right spot because then this will end up once it's all tightened up and the air is out of the saddle pad then this will end up in the middle of his girth can you see how it's like about two inches over from the middle mm -hmm. is where that goes to okay. and then same thing with the back cinch this is adjusted a little bit long see compared to that one mm -hmm. I think by about one hole Okay, so you undo those. Now, come to, come to the front of your saddle, put your stirrup down, and you're going to make sure that your pad is equally positioned underneath the saddle. And you're going to pull it up into the gullet a little bit with this handle. That's it. Okay, have a look on the side, make sure you're balanced at the back. Straight on his back. Okay, and the great thing about this kind of pad is that you've got all the, the um, air and shims underneath where the horse needs it, but you have hardly any bulk under your leg, so you've got a nice close contact. A lot of thick pads put your leg a long way out from the horse, and so it's not great when you're trying to do performance maneuvers. I can see like the air where the air cell ends, it's kind of like a perfect cushion under there. Mm -hmm. And, I under there. and feel that it's it's not all like there's still cushion in there yep and then um, the way Pat wanted this is to have a latigo on each side of the saddle instead of an offside billet because that means that you can always readjust it and not have it wear out in any one particular place okay, okay. all right so there's um, it's this almost a like little keeper air. for your latigo Right here. 
And actually, I think the way this has come out of the box, we've got too many wraps here. Just need to go around it twice, like that. Okay, otherwise you've got too much bulk. Okay. So now you've got two pieces of leather keeping you safe around your buckle here. And then you just take that up and thread it through the keeper. And you're ready to go. Now we're going to turn the horse around. Well, as far as your question, did I have even, mm -hmm. it's almost like the air cell is exactly underneath here and yep. exactly underneath there. It fits perfectly. And we have different size pads for different size saddles. Okay. So, other side? Yep. So we'll turn him around now. Now this is where, when you threw it up, your technique will get better and that won't get caught up. But for the first time, that was pretty darn good. <laughs> Okay, and then you just make sure all your little strings and things are not caught up. Looks like these are caught up from the other side. Where are they? From the front. <laughs> okay, and then there's a way to tie your ladder goes here. Where you double it like that, push it up under the rigging. And see our saddles have an in-skirt rigging so that you have the closest possible contact to a horse instead of you know like a flap there and then a rigging over the top of it and you just tie a little knot like this and this keeps everything just nicely tidy and then when you go to saddle your horse you just open this push that through your ring and then pull it through okay do you want me to show you how to do it first yeah i think we need to move okay. it a little more sideways Okay, so I'm going to show you first. So say I've undone my little knot here, all right, and I'm ready to go. If you want, you can put your stirrup up here to get it out of the way, all right? Make sure everything's where you want it. Now, I'm going to reach under here and get the buckle. And see how I just put, poke that through there? And then I pull it through like this. And then I go through here again. And it's just a wrapping technique. Wrap it down like this and back through here. And then you're going to pull it up and buckle it. All right. Okay. And then your back cinch is going to come quite easily like that. And I'll talk to you about tightness as you do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So see if you can tie this up first. Because when you unsaddle your horse, everything's the same but in reverse. So you, you pull your ladder goes out and then start folding them and push them up back through there. I've actually done this on my bareback pad, so. All right, good, a little ahead. So let it go under here mm -hmm. and immediately pull it up yep. through here. Try and make your little folds equal and then just tie the loose end around it. And so that goes around yep. like that and up. Mm -hmm. So now I get my girth first. Yep, just make sure that um, everything's pulled up in the front. I think we've got it like this is nicely pulled up here. It's probably a little far apart. Just lift it up a little bit more. You've got it about six inches apart. If you get it to about two or three inches apart on a Western saddle, that's great. And then it'll settle down where you need it to be. Is that a good amount of space? Yeah, okay? like your fingers. Okay. Undo that, undo it first. Just that piece, yep. And now reach with your closest hand because if you if you were to reach with your other hand like just feel what it would be like and see how you're vulnerable now if a horse pushed you it would throw you on your back yeah. but if you keep your shoulder to him and get it like that okay. then he can't push you off balance if anything goes wrong you can let go of the cinch itself and just work with this now okay put it through there Great. And now, as you pull it, put your hand under here and guide it. Yep. And you want to get it to where it just squeezes your hand. There. And see if you can put it in a hole. You're getting close to a hole there to buckle it into. Nope. A little more. There okay. it is. Okay. So just put it in that first hole. And let it let it be like that. There. 
Okay, now get your back cinch. And when you're first saddling, you don't want your back cinch tight. Okay, so just find it where it, it just snugs up against the horse but doesn't pull. And you'll notice that this angles forward like that so that everything is being cinched onto the horse's rib cage, like onto a sternum. Sometimes people don't have this little connecting strap down here, which is called a, a cinch hobble. And so this, the back cinch goes way back on the soft belly, and that's not good. So we don't believe in loose um, back cinches because then it doesn't give you the stability in the saddle. The whole idea is that this shares the um, cinching job and also the back cinch keeps the back of the saddle stable. When you've got long uh, bars, you know, a long length of saddle, it can get to swaying at the back. And so this stops it from swaying. And that's why you want it snug and not loose. And also sometimes when the cinch is loose, a horse can go to kick a fly and put his, his leg straight through the cinch. Okay, so right now I've got about that. Yeah. Should be tight. So you can take that? it one more without it being tight on him. Pull it forward towards his rib cage when you do it. Yeah. So it's not tightening up on him mm -hmm. at the back. Yeah. Did you, you, you wanted to come one more. You were on the last Oops. hole. <laughs> That's it. Just ease it on there. There you go. So now it's still pretty loose, like you could get three fingers sideways in there. Mm -hmm. And that's fine for the first cinching. Okay? Yeah. Now you want to move your horse around and get him to where he's breathing and you make sure that nothing's going to upset him. Okay. And often if you back him up first, that really helps for horses that, you know, get a little bothered by saddling. But pretty soon, once you, you know, use a saddle that is this comfortable for a horse, they stop having problems with being saddled because they know it's not going to hurt them. Just uh, yep. like slow is okay? That's enough. And now just send him around you. Just walk him around. If you had a horse, that, like a real young horse, and you knew that maybe it was going to buck a little bit, you'd make your cinch tighter right off the bat. Okay, and... Keep your distance when you send them out. And keep your distance, yeah. Okay, and now you want to check your cinch and pull it up at least another hole. Sometimes they've even, you know, gotten to where you can take two holes. Remember to guide it with your other hand. Sometimes also a horse will go like that. And after they let, there he just did it. Yeah. After they let their breath out is the best time to, to do it. If you turn your hand this way, as you pull it up, you've got more power. Yep. Okay. So it just went up one hole. Yep. I would do one more because you're almost halfway to the next one. See how this is that low? Okay. And still have my hand in there to... Mm -hmm. Always to guide it, and then it doesn't pull on his skin. Now you're doing it at a little bit of an awkward angle because you want the camera to be able to see what you're doing, but otherwise you would stand right there. Okay. And do it like that. Yeah, that would be yeah much easier. All right. Okay. Okay. Now see how this is sticking out? Yeah. If you just pull this outside one a little bit, it'll go flat. And still just leave this hanging? Yep, because it probably doesn't reach up there yet, and you're probably going to get one more hole tightened. Okay. So just at the walk again, or? At the walk. Now would be best if you did a trot. And, uh, you know, we've got a lot of detail on this on our Safe Ride DVD. But basically, you want to make sure that everything's going okay with the horse, that, you know, he's not bothered by anything. He's calm, he's obedient before you get on him, and we just do a little bit of ground skills. Okay. Is it important to go both ways? Yeah. Oh, sorry. He's been sleeping in the sun. Okay, now check your cinch again. And you want to be able to pull it up one more hole. So you 
you get into the position that works for you. Oh, that's much different standing in front of it. Yeah, it gives you a bit more leverage. That was easy. Yep. Okay, now you should be able to tuck it through its keeper. Keep it out the way like that. And now you should be ready to close your air valves. But here's what you want to do. Just put your elbow, like stand next to your horse. Stand next to your horse. Put your elbow on the seat of the saddle. And just squish out a little bit of air. And keep the weight on there. And then shut the valves. Now before you get on, you should be able to put your slide your hand down underneath the saddle and feel that he's got space. Can you feel it, like push down in there? Feel the space? Yeah. Okay. Sometimes you can't even put your hand, like your fingertips in and that, when you can't do that, it tells you that the horse is not going to be able to move his shoulders. Mm -hmm. Now when you get on him, that will feel a little bit more squeezy at rest, but as soon as he starts walking, it's going to open up and I'll get you to feel that. Now, you want to check that your stirrups are the right length. Mm -hmm. And a good way to do it is to put your fingers at the top of the stirrup, like right there, and then pull that up into your armpit. Okay? Now, it should be quite a stretch yeah. because there's a lot here. There's like three quarters of an inch of thickness that your foot's going to sit on top of. Yeah, it feels like it comes yeah. a little bit past. Yeah, so you come a little bit past and the inside of your... Um, stirrup should match up with your armpit. Okay, it okay. feels like it's a little past. You think it's going to be too long? I think we might need to go up one. Okay, so then you come here. This is called a blevin and it holds your stirrup in place. You just slide this off and you go, how many holes up do I want to go? You're thinking about an inch? I'm thinking, I'm thinking one. So come. Because it was about that much. So past. just a half an inch difference? Half an inch or an inch? Let's go an inch. Okay, you do it. All right, so you want to go there. Mark it with your finger. Whoop. Okay, then trap it closed. And then you're going to slide the blevin down over it. There you go. Lock it down into place. Perfect. Yep, that's good. And is that... I thought I've heard Pat say something special about this little thing here. What's that for? Is that if that comes loose? Oh, that it doesn't. Um, you've lost your. I know which one it is. Oh, okay. It's this one. That oh, that yeah. That doesn't fall off. Yes, there. this little button stops this. Stops you from losing that. Lock okay. it into place. And then this is an important feature on a stirrup, is this little hobble here. Because if you don't have this hobble, this whole piece of leather here can open up and your stirrup can turn upside down in it. So this keeps your stirrup down. And then also, um, our stirrups are twisted like this, so that they're ready, they're rider ready. A lot of saddles are like this, and then you have to pull them round and they're constantly pulling your toes in. I've sat in a saddle like yeah. that. Okay. okay, so we're going to shorten your stirrup on the other side and then you're ready to ride. Oh, and actually there's one more thing. This is a unique thing about the Performer saddle is how much these stirrups can move. See that? So you can get your leg into a lot of different places with this. So how much movement would you have on a regular um, A lot of them have none. Just some have, a, have some, but this is like this gives you maximum movement. Okay. All right. Okay. So let's fix the other side and then you're ready to get on. Okay. So now the last thing that you want to do is, you know, you've tightened this. Make sure that it's still pretty firm, which it is. That's good. And then check your back cinch and there's, you can get almost four fingers in there now. Okay, so you want to snug that up one more hole. And again, just slide it forward and snug it up. And just do it nice and slow. You don't want to do it like <laughs> fast on a horse. Perfect. And if your horse has never had a back cinch on before, you need to play with them a lot more on the ground first. You know, 
walk, trot, canter, even get them to gallop a bit, send them over a little log or a jump so that they get to feel all those things and then you don't have any surprises when you get on. And is it worth checking at this stage if I've ended up with my things level or will that? Yeah, you can look at it and say that looks pretty good. <laughs> it's kind of up in the front compared to the back, it's just a little bit up past level and that's perfect. Once you sit on there, all the air is going to go where you need it to. It'll feel great. Okay. And we've definitely closed those. Yes. So those are closed now. All right. And now you're going to mount. Okay. So one hand on your horse's mane. The inside rein is short, but not tight. Okay. So you've only got one rein. We just kept the horse in the halter for this exercise. Okay, and hold some of his mane and the rein in your hand. All right, and now you turn this towards you, and you're going to put your foot in, and then you're going to hop around and face his eye. And why is that? Because you want to read your horse every step of the way. You know, if you go to jump up and you see your horse's eye getting wide and starey, you go, maybe I'm not going to get on right now. And why can't I just put my foot in starting here? It's actually easier to do it facing the back of the horse. That's it. And then holding the front of the saddle is usually better than the back because you end up pulling the back too much. But when you go to jump up, you're going to bounce, bounce, and then really project your energy upwards so you're not hauling yourself up on your horse's saddle. And what about, like, we'll hold the horn or hold... The swells is good. The swell is the part right next to the horn. You had it exactly right. Okay. okay. And then you're going to jump halfway up so that you're not swinging your leg over him yet, but you're going to stand in your stirrup just for a couple of seconds with your hips sitting in the saddle. Turn your hips into the saddle. There you go. Rub your horse on the neck. And now everything's calm, looks good. Swing on. Lovely. Now, do you remember the feel when you were sitting on the other one? Like when you were sitting on the little saddle stand? Do you feel like you can access your balance point? You're nicely in place? Oh, it feels like a chair. I mean, Good. like a couch. Okay. It's great. And now I just want you to notice something before you move off. Try and put your fingers down here. And you can see that you can still get in there, but it's a little bit snug because now there's weight on. Yeah. Do the same thing back here. You want to make sure that nothing is really tight. You can get in a little bit, but it's firm. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, when you start to move, your horse's back will come up and those spaces will start to open up a little bit. All right? So when you're ready, just start walking. And I want you, well, I'll lead yeah, you. Yeah, it'd be great if you I'll could lead, lead me. And then I want you to feel that. Yeah. Feel them open up. And now his shoulders can move nice and easily and freely through there. Feel at the back as well. Okay, yeah. so if you were going along and you went, oh my goodness, this feels really tight here, then it tells you it, that you need another shim once you're moving. And if it feels really tight here, then it tells you you've got too many shims here and nothing balancing it in the back. So you've made kind of a ski jump and it'll poke him in the back here. And so if you've got the right amount of shims for the front, you would just need to add one for the back. But otherwise, like we've got it now, it's just perfect. Yeah, it feels... It's totally like it's sitting me right here. Yep. Great. So you can just relax. You don't have to strain any of your back muscles or anything to try and stay where you need to be for the horse. Now, this saddle size is perfect for you. Okay. It's cupping you nicely in the back with the cantle here. And these are called uh, bucking rolls. And basically they're like a, a thigh support. So if anything happened and your leg got thrown up, or you got thrown forward, this was actually, would help, help um, support you and keep you there. Right? Um, most of the time you don't want to feel this or you want to feel only a gentle pressure from it. And so if you've got really big legs or you have a very long leg, that's the reason you're going to jam up against here. So then usually you would need a bit of a longer saddle so that you're not jammed into one spot. What size is this saddle? This is a 16 and a half. Okay. 16 and a half. And would there ever be any reason to let air out while I'm up here? Um, yes, sometimes if you've 
made a mistake and you've got too much air in there, so you didn't um, saddle with the valves open and you've got way too much, you'll feel that you're sitting on, your, on an air bubble instead of feeling like you're sitting on your horse. And so then you might just open the valves and go and just let little tiny uh, bursts of air out at the same time, not one then the other. And then sometimes horses, you know, if they're crooked, um, as you're starting to teach them to get straighter and straighter, um, or if they've got an even muscling, you can let air out of one side, if one side feels a bit high. So you can just let it out a little bit on that side and level the saddle. And it makes it more comfortable and the horse will start using himself better. And pretty soon then you don't have to do that at all. But usually that all gets managed as you saddle the horse because the air comes out where there's the most pressure and stays in where there's the least pressure. Okay. And then make sure my horse can handle that noise. Yeah. You wouldn't want to do it for the first time and scare your horse. So um, you would just stand on the ground and fiddle here and make the noise with your mouth. Because okay. you're not going to get that kind of burst of air unless you're sitting in the saddle. Okay. Very there you comfortable. Go. Well, Thank if you. you just had a bridle on, you could go riding. Great. So that's a simple, easy way to understand and saddle with a Western saddle.